Alright guys, what's up and welcome back to another YouTube video. Yes, I'm back in another YouTube video. By whatever time this video drops, there'll probably be like six or five other videos out that I'm not in. But I'm here today and uh, as you guys saw by the opening cinematics of this video, today is a special day uh, for me. We are going to be installing the Ridgeline Motorsports uh, steering wheel and my BMW 335i. This has been a highly anticipated mod. Uh, for me, and it's funny, I'll actually show you the order date that I ordered this bad boy. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see this, but Ridgeline Motorsports, this is the Porsche uh, Cup style racing wheel for the F8X or FXX slash E9X. And this is the installation guide, but if you look right here, purchase date was 9-11-23. The date that we are recording this video, I think it's 12, three or four. Say the 12, the... I think today's the third. Yeah, so it's 12-3, so it's been about almost three months. I've literally just had this steering wheel uh, collecting dust on the top of my toolbox. I told Jamal, I was like, yo, I gotta install this thing, man. <laughs> because I, um, I I partnered with this company. I'm now an affiliate partner uh, with this company. So if you guys want this steering wheel, if you guys like the way it looks, and you guys like the way it looks on my 335i, you can also purchase it for your FXX. I'm assuming that it covers the entire F chassis. Uh, BMWs and also the E9X chassis cars. You can use my code Benny10. I'll put it somewhere, anywhere on the video, but Benny10 for 10% uh, off uh, of your purchase of one of the Ridgeline Motorsports uh, steering wheels, whichever one that you desire. Uh, steering wheel installs are very simple. Um, I'll walk you guys through it step by step, uh, especially when it comes to installing this, but there's not that you know many parts that have to be installed uh, you just have a couple of pieces here that all come together and a couple of bolts and they do provide uh, the hardware needed to assemble everything and put it in the car so uh, with that let's get to installing all right guys so while ben is he already started his assembly process which is pretty cool um so i had no idea this was a style of wheel that he was gonna get and honestly i think it's pretty cool um but it's definitely a functional wheel, which I like as well. Normally, I don't know, like nowadays I feel like, that's funny. <laughs> nowadays I feel like whenever people are getting steering wheels for BMWs, it's never anything complex like this. I feel like they normally go of like the OEM plus route. Like, what do you think, Ben? Yeah, you know I mean, what I mean? Like the LZ style type of, of wheels where it's just like, they take the leather, they make it Alcantara. You know what I mean? And then they spruce it up a little bit. Like there's nothing, anything complex, kind of like how this is. It's yeah. just like here, we're gonna change the leather or whatever materials on it, you know? I mean, it all depends on how you wanna build your car, the purpose that you're building it for. I mean, all of my BMWs ever since I've owned them have been built for a purpose. The M3 was built for a track purpose. It was an OEM plus build. Everything that I put on that car was for the track and it was built around that purpose. This car is just, in the works of being built for what its purpose is, which I kind of have an idea of, um, but I don't want to set it in stone yet because, I mean, <laughs> as of right now, I just have the car, you know, running and driving, and I have some wheels on it and whatnot, and some tires and some suspension, but nothing too crazy. I haven't gone deep in depth of like changing certain components to build the car for what I might potentially want it. Um, but for right now, I mean, this is this is just the build process, guys. You know, uh, literally one thing at a time. I told you guys, and you know, in the previous video that came out with the 335i, that you know I was going to be doing a full restoration build of this car. So I mean, there's really not any single component that I won't be replacing that is important to replace, if that makes sense. So you know, suspension-wise, drivetrain-wise, chassis-wise, uh, interior-wise, exterior-wise. You know, I want to bring this car, you know, back to life, to its full potential or the potential that I can bring it to. So make sure all these bolts are the same size. They're kind of throwing me off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, like Jamal said, I'm just assembling this real quick. 
Um, it's fairly simple. I mean, this is literally, <clears throat> this guide is literally a guide for dummies. Ridgeline Motorsports was kind enough to literally include pictures and step-by-step -step instructions of everything that you have to do in order to install this steering wheel on whatever chassis car that you're gonna be installing it on. And I'm sure it's different for every, you know, F chassis or E. 9X chassis, oh, depending yeah, on what you have. Oh yeah, that's an F chassis right there in the top picture. <clears throat> yeah, that's an F chassis on the top picture. So I mean, at that point, if you guys can't install this steering wheel from watching this video or actually reading the installation guide that they provide for you, then you probably shouldn't have the steering wheel. So give us like a little walkthrough of how complicated but uncomplicated it was. Yeah, no, I mean, it wasn't complicated at all. Uh, as you guys saw, <clears throat> this actual portion of the wheel, the hub portion, uh, it has a couple screws in it that come already in it. All you have to do is remove those. That's what those super long screws were where my face was like, what? So they were super long. Um, once that's off, you just take the actual Momo wheel, you put it over top of the actual, uh, I guess you could say the control unit of this actual uh, steering wheel. And then you just put the screws down inside, make sure everything's lined up and even, and then you just tighten it down. Now, it is very important to note that in the installation guide, it does say not to over tighten them uh, for whatever reason that may be. But I'm just assuming that they're meaning, you know, don't go ham, egg and cheese when you're tightening it, once it's tight, go back around again, make sure that they're all seated correctly and that they're all properly tightened, you know, hand tight. And that's really it. But this is essentially what the, you know, Porsche Cup style racing wheel uh, looks like when it is assembled. <clears throat> the rest of the components that you see here that are still on the table that I'm holding up are just everything that's needed. Uh, one, to make sure that it goes all together properly. This is a plug and play uh, steering wheel. Uh, it's literally just assemble and click it in. This is a quick release wheel. I'll try and show you here. So I can take the steering wheel off of the actual car itself, off of the steering column, and I can take the wheel with me. Um, that's what these other uh, extra components here are. So now this is all assembled and now I know what the rest I have to do. Now we need to remove the old steering wheel off the car. And the first thing we need to do when doing that is disconnecting the battery which I've already done to save time. If you're working on a E9X chassis car, it doesn't matter you know, which version it is, all the batteries are gonna be tucked over here in this wheel well, and you're gonna wanna remove your negative battery cable. You can put another cloth here uh, through your trunk latch to make sure that your trunk doesn't close while you're working on the vehicle. I'm not worried about it. Nobody's gonna walk up behind me and close my trunk, so we'll be good there. And then the rest, I'm gonna need my tools to disassemble the old steering wheel and remove it so that we can put the new steering wheel on. So let me grab those tools and I'll meet you guys in the front seat. All right, guys. <clears throat> I rescind my last statement, retract it, whatever you want to call it. Can't remember the last time I was goddamn wrong. Oh, I um, do. That's funny. I knew I wasn't crazy. I, I was crazy. I mean, you guys have to realize that I work on so many BMWs in a day that at a certain point in time, they just all become mixed together. And Jamal was like, yeah, he's like, I think you have to remove the screws in the back. There's three of them, there's three T20s to take the airbag out. And I was like, I guess that would make sense because on the E46 cars, and I believe the E36 cars, if you had the sports E36 steering wheel. E36 as well. Yeah, if you had the sports steering wheel, I think, um, it had uh, the screws in the back and that's how the airbag came out. But on the E9X chassis and the F8X chassis and every chassis after that, they changed it to where, um, you put a little screwdriver or a Torx bit into the the column and then you pop the airbag out like I just did, like that. So I'll show you on this side. And it was confusing me because I couldn't find the hole and the hole cutout blends in with the actual material itself and if you've never put anything in there, then you won't be able to see it. But it goes in right here. So you see where this is at, it slides in there and then you have to dig around a little bit until you find the actual portion of the steering wheel and you can't see it because it's you guys are out there but I have Jamal show you guys when it's in here but you push against it and it releases the the clip that holds on to the airbag right here and then it comes right out and then once it's out all you have to do is just unclip the fittings there we go there's the first one second one I believe you just pull on yep 
and that bad boy pops out, and then you have. Hey, uh, what are you trying to show them? I was just trying to show them that after they unplug both plug connections here, after they unplug both of these plug connections here at the top, there's this little T15 probably or a T20 right there that you have to undo as well in order to get everything out of the way. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, T15. So while Ben's working on that, let me give a quick little update on the E36. E36 content is going to be dropping very soon. Let me know how you guys like the uh, E36 drift video. Um, but I definitely have some things on the way for this. And I also have some things that already came in for this car as well. The M3, I already have some more things on the way. And I have some more things that already came in as well for this too. So I don't know, man, I'm super excited to uh, start driving this more often. My goal for this E36 is really to get it to the point where like, it's really a coin toss on what I want to drive, either the E36 or the M3. You know, I want to start uh, kind of bringing back the interior. I'm probably going to get rid of the welded diff and look for a LSD out of whatever year I can find. Um, I just know that they came out of the M3s and some of the early uh, 325s, I think, um, but they're just getting super, super pricey. But uh, that's my goal, at least for this. Did you make any progress, Ben? I'm waiting on you at this point. Okay, let's get back to work. Now then the airbag's out now, guys. Once it's out, that's what it looks like. This is that little uh, ground that I was telling you about there. Uh, depending on which steering wheel you have, I do have the sport steering wheel. Uh, it could be different for anybody else that doesn't have the sport steering wheel, but this little ground right here was keeping uh, the airbag still connected to the steering column after I had disconnected um, this one and this one right here. Um, once I removed this T15 uh, bolt, uh, it came right out and then you have also another ground connection right here that slips on right there. Just pull that off and the whole airbag will come out. Um, at that point, then you're just left with the skeleton of the steering wheel and you just need a, I believe a 16 millimeter uh, for your center bolt here. And it's also very important, I almost forgot here, to have your steering wheel as straight as possible when doing something like this. And I'll show you why when I take this bolt off. So when this comes off, behind your actual steering wheel on every BMW is what's called a SZL or a clock spring. It's very important not to touch this clock spring and or rotate it too much. You can, you can bump it a little bit when you're putting on a new steering wheel or putting on the old steering wheel. You can teeter with it a little bit, but it's very important to try to keep it as centered as possible because this clock spring has a coil that's round inside of it. And that's how the car knows when you're turning the steering wheel, when you're, once you're at full lock, both sides. So if I were to take this and do one full rotation and not realize it or think it doesn't matter, when I put the new wheel on, the clock spring will be one full rotation out of, out of rotation. And then if I were to go and turn my steering wheel afterwards, you have the potential of breaking the clock spring inside and at that point you're gonna get a Christmas tree all over your dash and everything like that and your whole car is pretty much not gonna die but everything's gonna freak out because you broke the, the actual coil spring inside your clock spring uh, SZL right here. So it's very important to remember, try to leave it as straight as possible, try not to bump it. When you put the new steering wheel on, everything should line up you know, normal and then you should be good. So whatever you do, don't rotate it and you'll be fine. Whew. All right guys, so at this point, I've uh, gone through and gone over the instructions. As you can see, I got them right here just to make sure I'm not making any mistakes. But now that we have everything disassembled and we're ready to put on the new wheel, you're going to have uh, this component uh, that they send with their steering wheel. Now, this is going to act as your new hub, essentially, I guess you could say. Uh, so as you see right here, you can't mess this up. So they have a, a dowel, an alignment dowel cut out here and that's going to go right here on your actual in between your SZO and the steering column itself so you can't mess it up <clears throat> essentially only goes on one way so all you do is line these two points up and then you slide it over and on now there is a cutout portion right up top of here and that's where we're going to send these wires through at the top of this we're going to feed it through and send them through so I'm going to do that now actually so once you have your wires through here, you need to make sure that this portion is facing, look at your wheel. If you look at the back of your wheel, if you look where the connection is, it makes like a upside down U almost. So you wanna make sure that this- It's a D. Essentially, yeah, it's a D. Um, you wanna make sure that that matches with that, with your wheel. So 
you want the round portion to be at the top. So when you put this on and in, it needs to be like so. So it needs to be assembled like that and then you'll have your, your points where you're gonna tighten it down with the bolts that they provide. So let's go ahead and put this together now. now that we have it assembled and ready. And then at that point, these plug connections are gonna plug into your ones where you took off from your airbag because I don't know if I mentioned it already, but <clears throat> this entire kit is plug and play. You're gonna retain all the functionality of your previous steering wheel with the steering wheel that Ridgeline Motorsports uh, provides their actual uh, module component. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish assembling this and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like once it's all done, this portion of it. All right guys, so at this point I have everything assembled. I don't know how much you all got of the B-roll of assembling it. It's not difficult, it's not. It's a little tedious. You just gotta kind of... <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> That's why he started laughing. You've been sitting in that chair for an hour and a half. I have, I have. It's just a little tedious. So I'm gonna try to help you guys out so it goes a little faster for you. But essentially, you need to make sure that the portion that goes around your steering column is centered correctly because there is movement allowed per the dial, per the alignment dial that they have on it. So once you have that piece centered correctly, you need to have it halfway on, halfway off. And then it tells you in the instructions to take this portion of it, this portion that connects to the actual steering wheel that has the plug connections, and it wants you to feed the wires through while this is still halfway on, halfway off. Because if you have this on and you put your center bolt in to hold down the hub that they provide, you won't have enough room to sneak the wires behind it and plug them in. So you need to have everything loose, sneak the wires behind, plug it in, and then you need to tighten down your 16 millimeter. But before you tighten down your 16 millimeter, it's very important to make sure that this portion of it that has the wires is correctly centered straight up and down so that you can put your steering wheel on straight up and down or else it's gonna be crooked. So this needs to be straight, halfway on, halfway off, then feed this portion through, plug in your things, make sure everything looks good, put in a couple of bolts after you tighten down your 16 millimeter behind it. And then once everything is straight, finish tightening these front bolts and then you'll be done. That's what I struggled with a little bit because uh, again, it is a little tedious, especially with these wires in the way, but once you have everything tight and everything secured, this is what the finished product looks like. Now, Ridgeline Motorsports does provide this little cover right here to cover up these wires or else, essentially, you would just put the steering wheel on and then you would have exposed wires. So you just take this, goes over just like that. Nothing too crazy. You can kind of tuck it in around the actual SZL portion to kind of make it fit a little bit better. But once all that's said and done, you just take your steering wheel here, grab her, pull on it, and then line it up. Make sure it's in. And you're done. So <clears throat> that concludes the installation of the Ridgeline Motorsports Porsche Cup style. There we go. Ridgeline Motorsport Porsche Cup style racing wheel for the E9X chassis. Now I just gotta reconnect the battery. So at this point, what I'm gonna do, what you guys need to do, you just need to reconnect the battery, make sure you have power to everything make sure that everything works you don't have any crazy lights going on in your dash and i'm going to put my battery back on i'm going to check everything i'm going to make sure that the all the buttons here volume up volume down next mode my actual horn works because jamal was asking me he was saying um you know why aren't you installing the horn that came with the steering wheel from momo and i said well because ridgeline motorsports with their device here that they make they do make this in-house here in the usa what they make your horn button actually gets transferred over here so I don't have to use the one that comes from Momo because my horn is now a button at the top. So that, that'll be my horn. I am gonna make sure everything works, probably take the car out for a test drive, make sure the, my steering wheel doesn't come off while I'm driving. And uh, that'll pretty much wrap everything up, guys. This was a fairly easy install to do. Um, I'm very, very satisfied with the steering wheel and how it looks and how it came out thus far. I can't wait to drive it and test it on the road. It, the diameter of it is smaller than the OEM one. Uh, but it does feel good in the hand and once I readjust my seat and my steering wheel to how I like, I'm sure it'll be uh, fantastic. And if you guys have stayed around this long to the end of this video, and this is for anybody who stayed to this, this long in the video, there is a secret surprise that I had Ridgeline Motorsports do for me. Uh, they will do it for you guys too if you ask them uh, for this steering wheel and I'm only showing you guys who stuck around this long. But this Ridgeline Motorsport sticker right here is, that is what it is, it's a sticker. And behind this, I had them engrave 
something onto the actual portion of the wheel itself if I can get it off. There we go. So just for you guys who stayed around this long, I had them laser engraved the actual BMW logo onto their, onto this, uh, well actually onto their module that they provide here, their, their uh, Ridgeline Motorsports module that they provide. So I had them laser engraved that on there. I thought that was a pretty cool touch. Little OEM Plus uh, look going on right there, kind of like the, uh, the, uh, the BMW GTS or the BMW GT4 of the F uh, chassis cars. So that's really cool. I'm just gonna clean up, clean up some of the uh, gunk that's on there and then we'll be good to go. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Again, if this is something that you are interested in and you are looking to buy, you can use my affiliate code link uh, on their website, Benny10, to get 10% off your purchase of any style wheel that they currently sell for your F8X or your E9X uh, chassis BMW. And um, make sure to stick around, guys. Like I said previously, we have a lot of a lot of things to install for this car to bring it back to 100 percent so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video we do appreciate your support as always and we'll catch you in the next one cue the outro cinematics <laughs>